YouTube. This is an unboxing. But don't mind all of the mess. Just forget all that. I'm working on something. There's another project. Other projects. And yes, the Mountain Dew is important. I have one hell of a headache, but I am also excited enough to push through and do this and take a nap. So we're doing an unboxing of an Hour Tech. How do you pronounce that? Washing machine. It's uh, solar. It comes about up to my hip. Yeah, I'm not going to show you where my hip is. It's about up to where my belt is, and I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, so, I want to say what? Three and a half, four foot? I could measure it, but... Um, it said it had somewhere around like 20-something wash capacity, where my other one had like five. So, I'm ecstatic about having something that can wash, potentially, my sleeping bag. So... You get a knife and go ahead and start unboxing it. Get my ceremonial uh, sacrificial dagger, if you want to call it. I tried making a hunting knife at one point, but uh, kind of turned out a little weird. And then I tried heat treating it. And I just liked the way it looked. It's nothing great. It's one of my first att first recent attempts to make a knife. Also, damaged my hands. Slice it open with this hand, and then I tried, you know, I did my level best to try to remove a fingernail. So that was fun. Hold on. This thing is positively gigantic compared to my other one. It's definitely a lot taller, I can tell you that for certain. So, try to tip it out of its box. Get out of here. Oh! I don't know how it's box. Here's the underside of it. I <laughs> figured while we're here, there's the motor. Belt's going through here. Actually, hold on. There's a motor. Here's a second motor. I'm guessing one of those might be the pump. So he has like the hoses come through here. Oh no, that's the pump right there. I don't know if you can see that. Barely. Okay. I don't know why we have two motors then. Anyway, those comes through here, up over there, and that should connect into your standard uh, washing machine drainers pipe thing, which is good news for me. That's exactly where I'm gonna put it. Anyway, let's get this thing up on its feet. Our tech, let's see. Wash capacity 18 pounds, spin capacity 10 pounds. Okay, so I wasn't quite right. Um, wash power 360, spin power 160, so a bit more than my other one. Max rated power 520. You see there's a wiring diagram right there. Um, you can take a screenshot of that and take a look at it yourself. Removing the excess plastic, which basically looks like right out there. So if I'm liking it, this definitely looks like something I could, I could wash. Uh, <laughs> you can see my reflection now. Well, I'm not doing a reshoot. I'm not that not that much of a looker anyway. Yeah, that definitely looks like something I could wash my uh, sleeping bags in, which makes me excited. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and try to set this up. All right, <laughs> this thing's kind of gigantic. But it still barely fits in here, which is awesome for me. Um, I could stick it here. I could stick it over there. But uh, right now I kind of need to move some stuff around. I just recently moved into this place, so I haven't got all the storage figured out yet. Also, I'm a pile guy, so there you go. That's the old one. It's a Zenny washing machine. No, it's still good. It still works. I still like it. I'm going to use that as my dedicated... Uh, RV washing machine. It's, I've had it for several years now. Solid piece. 
every once in a while start squealing, but uh, I think it's mostly because the uh, there gets to be water on the rubber belts, so don't do that. Anyway, I'm testing this out next. Now, I did just test it. It does uh, contain the entire sleeping bag, so that's nice as far as the ringing portion of it goes. I think I'm going to really have to shove it in there, but as long as it holds it, that means I can wash everything that I own. The Zenning washing machine, that right there, washed all of my clothes, and I had to cut down some comforters and whatnot in order to wash those, but this is nice. This means that it'll wash um, all my twin-sized uh, comforters and whatnot, which is great for me. Um, if you guys have, like, queen-size comforters, yeah, this, this isn't for you. But, uh, as far as, like, an off-grid thing for single guys or families that just sleep in twin-size beds, this is great. Uh, but you might need to take your queen-sized covers to the laundromat. As a matter of fact, I recommend that. Anyway, let's see how it goes. Alright, so as you can see, it's coming up right there. It has... And, oh, by the way, it comes with this uh, thumb screw deal, which I actually really like. Because it very loosely fits around the faucet head. And so, it's kind of nice when you can actually torque it down and use that. Anyway, that's filling up, and while it's filling up, I'll go ahead and tell you a few things about this. I don't know exactly what purpose this serves yet. I think it's just decoration. Yeah, it looks like just decoration. It looks nice, but I don't really know what to do about that. I don't know why you have a second fill spot right here, maybe to rinse out the spin bucket. Either way, this thing takes forever to fill up. Uh, probably because it's like 18 gallons instead of 5. <laughs> that might explain a little bit. The only thing I don't really like is that the, uh, uh, the spin dry function, while it's uh, larger than my Zenny, portable washing machine it has uh, it's feels still kind of small if you do it, it barely fits the twin size stuff or giant sleeping bag that's a winter sleeping bag I think it's like 32 degrees anyway I will be back after that fills up there you go it's working great to wash that sleeping bag So, yeah, definitely looks like the uh, Auratech uh, washing machine is running off of solar quite a bit, or rather easily. Of course, then again, I'm only drawing like 17 amps from the panels. Yeah, let's see. About 500 watts max. What pulses in between that? I forgot my kilowatts. I can't read that from my angle. You might be able to read it from the video. But, yeah, so far, it's looking pretty good. I've got 10 lead acid batteries, uh, four from Academy Sports, the uh, interstate, and then Walmart's equivalent, sorry, five interstate batteries, and five, um, was it ever starts? They seem to be working all right. The ever starts have less of a reserve capacity, but for some reason they tend to put out more power. The interstate has more capacity, but less oomph behind them. I guess is what you'd say. You got a whole bunch of the uh, battery cables from Harbor Freight. Um, those are not cheap, but I bought them over time when they were cheaper than they are now. This is not a safe way to set it up. I just kind of have it set up that way because I'm testing out a few things. This used to be the battery bank that was in my van, but considering I now live in a trailer, <laughs> that's kind of gone by the wayside. Also, another project, I need to finish this up, but I installed a window air conditioner. That does not run off of, that runs off of just shore power, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, but it can run off the battery for, I don't know how long. Not very. <laughs> but anyway... Just want to point out that you can run this thing off of a 500 watt uh, solar array that you have hooked up to your van. Um, 
and then just hooked up to like 10 foot ass batteries. This is my setup. It works rather well. 1,500 watt pure sine, pure sine wave inverter. Modified, I'm not sure if it would work because right now I've got, a, got an extension cord going all the way back to where that um, machine is and it looks like it just shut off. Give me a second. Oh yeah. It's just shut off. Sudsy. All right, so right off the bat, I noticed a bit of an issue. These lips, right now that's at an angle going down. These lips aren't very big, so I've dropped the water all over the floor. So I'm gonna have to go and fix that. Um, I have towels here, so it's not that bad. It's linoleum. There's no seam for it to get underneath it, so I'm not too worried at the moment. But it did manage to fit the entire 32 degree winter sleeping bag inside the tub. So I have no doubt, I mean, I had to push it a bit, but I have no doubt this will handle any kind of twin size comfort. Um, it's, like, it's just like wool stuff. Or, I don't know, because it's down, it's really light. But anything that's too thick might not handle it. But that handled a uh, 32 degree winter sleeping bag, so that's awesome. All right, time to kick on the uh, spin. It's taking a while. Oh, I know why. Because I've got water on the inside of this thing. Hold on. Gotta drain it. There does not seem to be a pump. Unless I'm missing some here. I might be missing something here. That's where there was a pump. But I'm not seeing any switches or anything like that. Hold up. Let me consult the manual. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't know if you can hear that. I hear something trying. There is a pump in there. But it's not doing too well. I wonder if it just needs to be primed. Oh yeah, I can see, I can see water right there. It is indeed trying. There we go. There is a pump. You just need to prime it first. So, do the whole uh, siphon principle. Just make sure it um, goes through the first time, and once it starts, it'll continue pumping out. There you go. <laughs> Something else I just learned. Wait until all the water's out of this tub before you start trying to spin dry it, because What's happening is that this, the uh, the overflow from this is going into the tub, uh, the dry or rinse tub, and it's making it hard for it to uh, actually drain out. And that made me that made me realize another thing: this hole right here, when um, you isolate it after it's all drained out, you can rinse it after you spin dry it in here, and you don't have to worry about going through that again. I think. I'm still going to do that because that's how I learned how to do it. Uh, I'm still going to shift the uh, shift from the spin back into the um, wash tub with clean water, and that should clean out all the crap that's still left over in there. Because that's what that's what I noticed the most cleaning happens is on the rinse cycle. So there you go. Spin dry. Yeah, I'm not noticing that singer. Anyway, just about drained out. That tub's empty. Doing golden. Let they run for the next five minutes or so. Now look how much crap was in that sleeping bag. That's kind of disgusting. It's like old skin cells and whatnot. This is a br this is literally brand new. That's disgusting. It's not disgusting. Actually, that kind of is. Come on, focus. Are you going to focus? Nope. There we go. This is going there. I had moved over some stuff. I actually decided to clean up that area. After it's done spin drying. Because right now it's heavy as all hell. Or it was when I had like 18 gallons of water in there. Is it 18 gallons? I think so, yeah. Hold up, so water weighs about eight pounds a gallon. That's over a hundred, what? No way. 
Over 100 pounds of water? That's nuts. So that just looks a whole lot more clean. I like that. So for those of you who don't know, this little hookup often can fit just do regular garden hose. I happen to have a small piece of garden hose here with a male adapter going to the female hot water thing. There's a very, very small, small leak. So anyway, turn that on. You get hot water come into here at a very fast rate. Problem is, it's just hot water. So be careful because it will probably burn. But me being an idiot, I managed to cut the male end off of one piece. Uh, so I ended up cutting off two pieces of hose. <laughs> don't do, don't be me. Sometimes I get overexcited and I don't actually do the job properly sometimes. Because I don't think it completely through. That being said, most of the time I'm okay. <laughs> but everyone's made 90 10 t error every once in a while. Let's see, oh my goodness, that fills up a whole lot faster. And then, this has a pump in there. It's going to pump the water through there into the waste disposal hose. So you can use this in place of an actual washing machine. The reason why I bought this is because I wanted something to use for, with solar power but also be large enough to actually handle all of my needs. There we go. Well, the problem is that when the grid goes down and the electricity happens to kick off, I'm not going to have a way using this setup to feed water into it. So I'm going to have to work on that. I'm going to make it like a water reservoir or something. I'll figure out something. But for now, this is fantastic. And there you have it. The most janky, off-grid, solar-powered laundry and you know food storage system that you'll probably see on YouTube for a while. <laughs> that is a safety hazard. I'm gonna to have to figure out something about that. I'll probably make like a, a stand to keep this thing off the ground. Raise it up maybe about maybe what six inches. And I'll have that off the ground maybe on a post right there. Separate the two of them maybe make it a little bit fancy. Have maybe like a shelf over the top of it so I can put like detergents and whatnot. There's a shelf right there. You know, I'm going to use that. <laughs> anyway, that's about all I've got for you. I like this thing. For what it is, it's like almost 300 bucks. I think it's worth it. If you just need something small for maybe off grid. I mean, if you, you probably get this working for a family, but uh, it'd be one of those things where you would you want to use an actual full-size washing machine. They do have ones bigger than this, but this is one of the biggest that I've found. Anyway, that's what all I've got. Toodles.